Hi, I'm Kurt with the Office for Mac Group. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the new features that make it easier to work with functions and formulas in Excel 2008. Whether you're new to Excel formulas or need help building a complex, multi-argument calculation, the new Formula Builder is a good place to start. Let's say you want to find out how much interest you would pay over the life of these different loans. First, you need to click in the cell where you want the results to appear. Then here in the toolbox, click Formula Builder. If you don't see the toolbox, click this button. If you're not sure which function to use, try searching for what you want to do. OK, that narrows down the possibilities, but these function names are still a bit puzzling. If you click a function, you can see a plain language description of what it does. This one says that it returns the cumulative interest paid between two periods, which sounds like what we want to know. To use this formula, just double click and Excel sets up everything for you. Now, when you click in any of these boxes, you can see what information you need to provide for each argument. If the information that you need for an argument is on the sheet, like this loan rate, just click it and Excel adds it to the argument box. For this argument, you need the total number of payments, which in this case would be 30 years times 12 payments per year, or 360 payments. PV stands for present value, which for this loan is $125,000. As you might have noticed, the color of each argument matches the color around the cells containing the corresponding data. And for this loan, the start period would be 1, and the end period would be 360. It says that type is the timing of the payment, but that's not very descriptive. So let's click on this link to get some more help with this function. As you can see, there's detailed syntax for all of the arguments, as well as examples and sample data that you can copy. For the type argument, for example, let's say that the payments are made at the beginning of the period, so the type should be 1. Now, back in the Formula Builder, when you press Return, Excel calculates the answer, and the result appears in the cell. Well, it's negative, which is right, because this is a cost, but something must be wrong, because this seems like way too much interest to pay for this loan. OK, looking at help again, it looks like the rate argument should be on a monthly basis. So let's divide the yearly rate by 12 and press Return. Now that answer seems a lot more reasonable. Now. So that you don't have to go through all of that for other calculations, you can copy the formula to other cells. You just point at the lower right corner of the result cell, and when the cursor becomes a black cross, click and drag it over the other cells. Before we finish up, let's look at Autocomplete. It's another Excel 2008 feature that can help you with formulas. Say you want to calculate the average of these interest rates but you can't remember the exact name of the function. If you type an equal sign to begin the formula, and then type A, here in the list of A functions is average, which is the one you want. And now you can complete the formula in the Formula Builder, or directly on the sheet. So that's how you can use the new Formula Builder and autocomplete features to work with formulas in Excel 2008. Be sure to check out Help and the Office for Mac website for additional Excel 2008 videos, courses, and content.